How did you get into cycling? What are your first memories? First memories of riding, probably a 24-inch wheel Monarch that was my first real bike. Probably I was eight years old, lived in Sunnyvale. There were orchards in Sunnyvale back then. <laughs> they were preparing to do some construction on something, so they built, they, they had all the dirt piled up in huge mounds there. And it was a blast, because you could take your bike and ride up this thing, which seemed like it was 300 feet tall. It was probably about 20. And we built what kids would do now for BMX ramps and stuff. And that, that was my first real memory. I mean, I didn't get into long distance cycling till probably fourth grade, which is still earlier than most, I suppose. And it was a way to escape, to get away from the house. So you weren't dependent on your parents. It's different now. People would worry to death that their kid would be gone for a few hours, you know, out on a bike or anything. But back then, you know, you'd see these places on a map, Portola Valley. I remember getting a, my first AAA Bay and River map. That was kind of the map that had everything. And you'd see these towns around you and like you could get there. You could get on your bike and you could ride first to Woodside. You discovered that. Then there was this place beyond at Portola Valley. And then there was Skyline Boulevard. It's like, what's that? And we'd ride up old La Honda and we'd get past, I had Schwinn Varsity back then, you know, which we thought were the greatest racing bikes in the world. I mean, that's what it was. My friend Rob Christ and I would ride up there and uh, you know, we'd get encouraged by other people on, I'm sure, nicer, lighter bikes. We had no idea. We thought we were on the greatest bikes in the world, but that was kind of how I started. What year was that? 65 or so? Some, something like that. Late 60s, yeah. My first real ride was probably into Portola State Park because, well, I had a, a newspaper route back then, and so I had a rack on the back with a wood plate on it and the, a box that we carried newspapers in. Well, for rides like that, we would buy, you know, like two liter bottles of Coke and stuff, and we'd just take off. And I remember, what I remember most about that ride into Portola State Park was how steep it was going down and somehow imagining that if we went down it slower, it wasn't going to be as bad coming back up. It didn't work. But we didn't know any better. We had a great time. When you were growing up, were there any other kids in the neighborhood that went on to cycling or that you knew were big names in cycling? When I was growing up, no. When I started, I wasn't really aware of a cycling community until I was probably 14 or 15, joined Western Wheelers. Uh, and that's when it was like, wow, there's all these people who ride bikes. Things were very different then than now. Western Wheelers at that time, it was almost like a farm club for the racing clubs. The racing clubs, Pedali Alpini, Belmont Bike Club, San Jose Bike Club, they got a lot of their young members, uh, their junior riders, from Western Wheelers. And you don't have that sort of system anymore which is really unfortunate. But Western Wheelers, that's where I did my first century. We'd first get out on longer rides and you'd almost get recruited by people who would go on those rides and say, why don't you show up for a race? Why don't you uh, come to a Pedali Alpini meeting or whatever? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of how it got started in that end. Cycling also had an appeal to me because it was countercultural. It wasn't something normal people did. My father was the sports editor of the Redwood City Tribune for 20 some odd years and so I was exposed to all the normal sports that you're supposed to do and be good at which I wasn't any good at. I, football, baseball, anything that required the normal hand-eye coordination. I mean I'm supposed to run towards a high-speed projectile? That made no sense to me. But cycling was something that I could do and it, there had to be some attraction to the fact that it was not something that my father could directly relate to. I mean I will admit to that. Now he got into it. He started covering cycling for the newspaper, the first uh, tour of California. He was one of three or four reporters who went with that and wrote lots of stories on that. And so, so he got into it and he wished he could have supported my cycling in a bigger way, but financially it was always something I had to do on my own. I basically worked to support my cycling habit. Now you have a brother? Yeah, my brother Steve who runs the Los Alto store. He was not a big time cyclist at all back in the day. He's much more active as a cyclist now than he probably ever was before. From a business standpoint, he has all the skills to handle that sort of thing much better in some of the, that area than I am. 
you know, I'm the complete bike nut. What were the bike shops in the day? So you lived in Sunnyvale, what were the bike shops? Uh, well, I uh, lived in Sunnyvale through second grade, then I moved to Redwood City. I've pretty much been in Redwood City most of my life. So the bike shop that we always went to was Sugden and Lynch on Santa Cruz Avenue in Menlo Park. They had a, a regular ride that was like at 5 p.m. I think out back and that's where uh, Tom Ritchie showed up with his first frame that he built and we made fun of it because the top tube sloped an inch front to back because he screwed up on some measurement. It didn't matter, he could still ride everybody off his tail and how are we to know that that sort of frame would be a fashionable style now? But that was that in Cupertino Bike Shop, that was the other one that we hung out at. Cupertino Bike Shop was where I bought my first really nice bike at Chinelli. Back then that frame, it was about the most expensive frame you could buy. It was $217, I remember that really well. Uh, Mozzie ran about $198, you know, how things are a little bit different now. But I saved up a long time. I was supposed to have to wait, I think it was like a 16 month waiting list for Chinelli back then. You know, things people would never put up with now. Fortunately, somebody canceled out on an order and I got mine in six months, which was pretty remarkable. And I think, speaking of other people cycling in the area, I probably went with the Chinelli because that's what Lindsey Crawford rode. And you talk about Bay Area figures who influenced people. I mean, Lindsey was just an amazing guy. Uh, when you went to a race, he, he just had this professional way of carrying himself exceptionally nice guy no matter what rode a bike with just a, a sort of style that nobody could match and he had this big orange Chanel and I thought you know that looks like a pretty cool bike I wouldn't mind that and he went on to be a airline pilot right? yeah well he was an airline pilot then he retired probably eight or nine years ago I think uh, he's still I see him out there all yeah, the I time see him all, all the time too yeah he's one of those two people you can spot way off in the distance and know who it is. Lindsay and the other person would be Yopst. Yeah. There's just something about their style and the way they look, you, you, know, you know who that is half a mile away. Yeah.